to Mr. Hasui Kawase, a woodcut artist, was known as the Hiroshige of today to lovers and connoisseurs of this art both in Japan and abroad. He adored nature and landscapes of his native land Japan and spent his whole life in traveling in the countryside. This film will show you how enthusiastic and devoted an artist he was in his lifetime. I am Hasui Kawase, a woodcut artist and native of Tokyo. I am 73 years old now. Painting was my favorite in my childhood. As a man of middle age, I took interest in woodcut printing and since then have been studying the Wukioe school for more than four decades. With the influence of the modern machine civilization, the city of Tokyo is now crowded with radios, television sets, tall buildings, automobiles and people. And almost everything is heading towards automation. In the midst of this modern city, woodcut printing, done all by hand from beginning to end, is still going strong. Thus, I am living in the world of two opposite natures. For this reason, I frequently leave the tumult of the city behind for a carefree journey, looking for fresh air and quietness. Here I am on the train, far away from the bustle and hustle of Tokyo. Mount Fuji shows its graceful figure against the blue sky. I enjoy one Indian summer day in the peaceful countryside of the ancient city of Nara. suburb of the city. Old Ikarugano Sato, or Horyuchi village, lies quiet in the abundant autumn sunshine. I stroll here and there along the country road or along a long row of earthen walls looking for some interesting subjects for my prints.
thanks to the good weather, the farmers have already reaped a rich harvest. I can very much appreciate all the more delicate and quiet beauty of the declining season of the year. Now I am at the outskirts of a village west of Horyuji Temple. Here a row of interesting looking houses attracts my attention and I immediately start sketching. Now I have finished it. Let me have a smoke. Now back home in Tokyo, I start preparing a draft with a pencil to the size of a woodcut print. When it is finished, I lay a fine sheet of Japanese paper on it. I get myself a suzuri or inkstone. And prepare sumi or black ink. Then I trace the outline of the draft with a brush. This process is called Sengaki and the work produced is outline drawing. 
Now let me show you the whole process of woodcut printing. It's unique traditional ukiyo-e color printing techniques, which I have followed for more than 40 years. The outline has to be traced with great care because it almost determines the quality of final prints. Vivid movement depicted on lines is a characteristic of Japanese painting. And this is to be reproduced, and the shady parts too. Thus, the outline drawing is finished. The outline drawing is handed to Mr. Kentaro Maeda, an engraver whose skill I deeply admire. Blocks are cut from a fully grown straight cherry tree which has been dried for a few years and are planed well. Rice paste is spread out uniformly over the block. The surface is tapped with the palm of the hand to make it rough. The outline drawing is placed on it face down. He first pastes it in the middle with his fingertips and next on the right side and then on the left for the purpose of placing it right. Now it is put aside for drying. In the meantime, he examines and cleans up the tools, such as knives and chisels. Sharpening tools requires an unusual skill. Tools are sharpened on the grindstone. Now he works on the knife. Fixing the grindstone, he sharpens a small chisel. Before the paper is completely dry, the engraver rubs it hard with his fingertips till it is peeled off little by little, and the drawing on the other side appears clearly. Following the original drawing, the engraver cuts in along the right side of a line and then its left side and leaves the outline drawing on the block. In engraving the key block, only a knife is moved to all directions while the block is kept still. Only hard training enables the artist to move the right hand fingers freely to work on delicate lines. If the block is moved to all directions when printing with sumi ink, you will get an unsatisfactory result. The lines of uneven width instead of neatly trimmed lines. So you see why fixing the block firmly in place is important. Please note how smoothly the knife cuts a line. Watch the delicate movement of the blade tip and the masterly work of the right hand fingers holding the knife.
and how well the left hand cooperates to prevent slipping. He manipulates the knife to form fine delicate lines full of confidence, here with his utmost care and there quite nonchalantly. Technical dexterity and artistic passion are well combined in him. Yes, indeed, the precious fruit of his 50 years of endeavor and experience in this field of art. Then he cuts away all the unnecessary parts along the lines by the use of a semicircular chisel and mallet. To remove larger area, he works with a broad chisel and a mallet. This strenuous work is called saw-ai. The chisels are to be moved along the directions where the veins of wood are running. This method entirely differs from that of outline cutting in that the block can be moved for the convenience of using a chisel. Generally it takes from 10 days to 2 weeks to complete one key block depending on the design of a picture. After so I, more delicate tips left around the lines are removed with a flat small chisel. Now we have a key block with these elegant lines raised upon the surface, showing the sharp cut of the knife. Thank you very much for your wonderful job, Mr. Maeda. Please have a cup of tea. There are two register marks on this key block, a right angle mark on the upper left-hand corner and a short straight one on its right. They serve as a guide when placing paper at the time of color printing. Four pieces of white cloth are put at each corner of a printing table, elevated towards the farther side. They are wet and serve to fix the key block in position. With a brush, he spreads sufficient ink over the surface of the key block. places a thin piece of Japanese paper on it and rubs hard with a baren or a rubbing pad. He gently lifts the paper and the monochrome print is obtained. This is called kyogo zuri or a proof sheet. In the same manner as many paper sheets are printed as are needed for color blocks.
every print has the same right angle and straight line marks as those on the key block. You can see the dark right angle mark at the right hand side bottom and the straight line mark just above it. Now this is my job again, irozashi or color distribution. I choose 10 of the proof sheets which have the similar shade of color and color each of them with cinnabar color according to my color scheme. We use cinnabar color only regardless of the variety of colors we want in a final print. There are two reasons for it. Cinnabar is easy for the engraver to recognize on the block and also is easily washed off. I spend more time on the color distribution because the outcome of a woodcut print depends greatly upon it. I have already colored 10 of the proof sheets. This means 10 color blocks are necessary. The engraver is to remove the parts not colored and leave the colored parts untouched. Thus, the ten colored proof sheets are handed again to my engraver, Mr. Maeda. Mr. Maeda has been my collaborator for many years, and he knows every characteristic of my brush touches in detail. Therefore, with full confidence, I can entrust my work to him. First, he studies the color scheme. selects a block to engrave. And spreads out paste on the block. and pastes a colored proof sheet face down over it. He pastes all the rest of the colored proof sheets on each block. Then he leaves them for a while till they get dry. Before the block gets dry, the pasted sheet on it is rubbed hard with the fingertips until it is gradually peeled off thin and shows the cinnabar colored part. As in the case of key block making, he first cuts lines with a knife. Lines are engraved to stand out for a key block, while for a color block, wider areas are left high. He digs out with a semicircular chisel and a mallet from the edge to the outward direction.
Next comes the process of saw eye, removing all the wide unneeded space with a broad chisel and a mallet. The engraving of color blocks consists of cutting in with a knife and digging out with one or two kinds of chisels by the help of a mallet. By repeating the process on each color block, the stage of saw eye will come to an end. It generally takes from 10 days to 2 weeks to make 10 colored blocks or so, depending on the design of the print. This requires a lot of patience. Now saw eye is completed and this time a small flat chisel is used in trimming off unnecessary tips along the edge. Well, the work is all done. Thank you, Mr. Maeda. A cigarette tastes very good after such an achievement. Now the process of printing. First of all, barren or rubbing pad is prepared. It consists of a coiled cord of fibers of a bamboo sheath and a circular mat of 48 sheets of strong rice paper pasted together. They are to be wrapped in a bamboo sheath for use. A bamboo sheath is moistened with a water brush. And then warmed with breath to render it soft. Then he wipes off unnecessary moisture on it, opens it inside out flat and rubs it hard across the fiber with a round metal tool. It is to render the surface even and smooth. He turns the other side out then and repeats the same operation to smooth out the surface. The bamboo sheath is now wet and soft enough. And the edge is trimmed a bit and the sheath is placed on the table. Then he places a circular mat and a coiled cord on it, wraps it from one side to the other side and pulls out tight. Both ends are held together and tied with string. Unneeded parts are cut off and the baron is made. The technique of wrapping the baron requires great skill and it takes several years to learn. Pure Japanese hosho paper treated with size is usually used and may be the best paper for printing. 
This is, however, hard to absorb the colour, and two or three sheets are moistened together with a water brush, and they become soft enough to absorb pigments. The moistening of paper is another step in preparing for printing. Next comes the preparation of pigments. In olden times, pigments were made from flowers or tree bark. Today, powdered pigments are used, as in the case of Japanese painting. They are dissolved in cold or lukewarm water, and any intermediate colour of our choice may be easily obtained by mixing some of them. No dyes are used. Whitewash is used only for rare cases. This is why a woodcut print gives a beautiful transparent colour effect which cannot be produced either in Japanese or oil paintings. Now hand printing. The printer places the key block on the printing table. Usually sumi ink is spread on the key block, but today indigo blue is selected instead. So the brush is dipped in the indigo blue and the key block is coloured with it. Then the printer holds a sheet of paper above it and fixes its right position by means of two register marks, first by the right angle mark and then the straight mark. He places the paper carefully and rubs it with a baron. He lifts the paper and we have an indigo blue print. He prints several more sheets in this way. The printer Mr. Ono has 60 years of experience and is now one of the best printers in Japan and is my splendid collaborator. Shall we take another colour block and print bluish grey stone walls on the roadside? Well, the colour does not fit within the line of the key block. Please correct it. A wooden tip called kuiki is inserted on the register mark to fill in the space. It is a chip of a small cherry wood with one end sharpened to stick out on the block. After fixing the register mark, he spreads the pigment again on the block. Places the paper on it. and rubs it hard. How's that now? Yes, the borderline has fitted perfectly this time. Marvellous skill indeed. Fixing a quickie is another expert job. Now let us colour the eaves. Take another colour block and print the wall. Apply an antiquated looking colour, fix the paper correctly, rub it, there we have the wall coloured. Let's colour the attic and the eaves above the wall, Mr. Ono. Please print the grass in the field. Now we have the green of the grass. The blue colour is graded from the foreground. The ground is printed. The ground is coloured in gradation. Let's colour the persimmons red. Please mix red in cinnabar, Miss Ono. Place the paper in position with the aid of the register marks. Rub it with a baron. 
and left it off the block. The persimmons are coloured red. The borderline fits very accurately. Look at this block. This is painted with three different colours. Where there is space enough for two fingers between colours, two or three colours can be printed separately. This saves blocks. In the case of this block, printing must be done three times with one block. Old Hiroshige's works require printing about 20% more than the number of colour blocks necessary. I have to print two and a half times as many. Next, we shall colour the green of the wood. Rubbing is indeed hard labour. You can see the shade in the clouds. Now the blue sky. First, he spreads blue with the brush, then rubs the paper and he gets the blue sky. It is hard work indeed. This time, gradate blue slightly from the bottom of the cloud and then from above. Wet the surface of the block with a moistened rug and spread blue over it with the brush. Place the paper on it, rub it from the back and we have such a beautiful gradation of blue sky. Lastly, please colour the shady parts a little darker. Then the print shows a strong effect and becomes more impressive. Now it's all over. Thank you, Mr. Ono. No words can express fully the anxiety and expectation I go through during the whole process. Yet I am confident that no one but a woodcut artist can enjoy such an ecstasy of joy as he holds a new product in his hands. And this joyful moment has kept my energy and passion fresh as ever throughout my life for more than four decades. To our great sorrow, this Hasei Kawase suddenly became ill and passed away a few years ago. Autumn still seemed to Ikarunga no Sato in Nara. The area of Yamatoji is as quiet and peaceful as ever. Only our Hasui can no longer be seen walking around. The winter is gone. And the spring has come to the ancient castle of Hirosaki again. Cherry blossoms are in full bloom and appear more beautiful than ever. Yet we can no longer find the solitary figure of Hasui Kawase strolling under them. He is not seen even along the outer moat where young people are enjoying the spring in boots. Nor along the Yomeimon gate in Nikko, filled with the scent of young green leaves. Under the clear blue autumn sky, we look in vain for that lonesome figure walking across the Senjoga Hala field of Nikko. Only nature remains majestic, silent, and unchanged. Nor can we find the friendly Hasui by the blue waters of Lake Chuzenji. Hasui Kawase loved to travel and sketched wherever he visited. During the 40 years of his life as a woodcut artist, he produced nearly 500 prints. In them, he captured the nature of a familiar, old countryside and reproduced a poetic effect created by it. How much joy and consolation these works of his have given us!